Hello fellow self-publishers and illustrators. So you may be one or both for this tutorial, but today we are going to be going through the very basics of Photoshop. And Photoshop is my absolute favorite program to illustrate in. It is what I have illustrated all of my books in, and it just is unbeatable in my own humble opinion. Now, before we get started, I do want to say this tutorial is intended for those of you who are using a drawing tablet. I am using a Wacom Intuos CTL 4100, and this particular tablet is only about $70 to $80. It is very affordable, and I will put a link down in the description. If you are trying to do this with a mouse, um, I would recommend you hold off and grab yourself a drawing tablet if you really want to get into it. Just because drawing with a mouse is going to be so much more difficult and you will find yourself really struggling. So it can be done, but it, it is going to be hard. So that being said, let's get started. So this is what it looks like when you very first open Photoshop. Um, if you don't have any documents, you won't see anything down here. And I do have to blur some out because some are projects that have not yet published. So let's go over here to a create new. We want to make a new canvas and this is where we get to really look. So we get to choose over here, do we wanna work in pixels? inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, or picas. And some of those, you may not know what they are. If you don't, that's okay. Um, I like working in inches or pixels, and that's my preference. Um, so we are just going to stick to an eight by 10. This is where you're really going to focus on your page size. So if you're illustrating for yourself or someone else, if they need a specific page size, this is where you're going to get into it right here when you set it up. Now the resolution, I work at 300 pixels per square inch. Um, you can make this higher or lower, but 300 is going to be the base that you want to use. And then we have our color modes. So RGB is going to be for screens and web, whereas CMYK is going to be for printing. So if you are printing the illustrations, you may want to work in CMYK instead. I will say that if you are publishing or you're illustrating for somebody who's publishing through uh, KDP, they do have a really good RGB to CMYK converter when they print and their colors stay very true to color. Um, so you may be able to get around keeping RGB for your documents. Otherwise, I would recommend CMYK, but I'm going to do RGB for now. And then um, I leave the rest of it and let's go to create. Cool, so we can see this in here. And I do wanna say, if you are adding bleeds, you would want to do so on the previous page. So that is how you create a document. Now, what I like to do is go up to this window and I like to have color on, which is this color swatch down here, my layers panel, which is my layers over here, my navigator, which shows my whole canvas right here, which I really like as I start getting really in detail in illustrations. And um, we do not need these properties open right now. So what I will do is I will sort of organize this to where I have a nice little mini image. Oops, no. And then I will, ah, sorry. And then I will move this all up so I can see a lot of my layers because if you have seen me illustrate before, you know I am layer crazy and uh, that really, really helps me when I illustrate. So over here we have our tools and if you don't see those, just come up here and make sure your tools are checked. And um, I like to have them over on this side. Now you can lay out this any way you want. You can organize it any way you want. You may find other things in here over time that you prefer. And you definitely don't have to keep it set up my way. This is just what I found works best for me when I illustrate. So when I illustrate, I use this brush tool, which is this paintbrush over here. And this is what I use to draw. Now, 
the brush tool can get super fancy. So when we click down here on the brushes, you get to see all of the brushes you have. And I have so many. <laughs> I do recommend if you haven't already, go over to bethanystall.com slash classes. Over there, I do have a link to where you can download free Photoshop brushes. I do recommend downloading all of those just to give yourself a very nice selection, but there is nothing wrong with using basic round brushes to do your illustration. Um, I typically will use a pencil or a chalk or a sort of natural type of brush when I illustrate. I think overall it does give a little more texture to not be so uh, stark and bubbly, but if you're going for that very like paper doll cutout style, I think round brushes look good. It really just depends on where you want to go with your illustration. So for now, let's just pick this hard round brush. Now up here we have the size, so of course the bigger it gets, the bigger it goes, and the smaller it gets, the smaller it goes. That is pixels for PX. And then we have something called hardness. So at 100% hard, oh, over here, my color, let me choose black. Um, so at 100% hard, that is a nice stark line. Now if we go to about 50%, that line gets to be a little bit blurrier. And then if we go to 0%, that's a nice fuzzy line. This is really good when you're doing stuff like shading or you don't want as crisp of lines. So it's like an airbrush. If you imagine you're really close here, getting a really nice tight line and over here you're further away and it's sort of going out. So that is your hardness level. Um, I like to stay around the hundreds at first and then I will slowly lower that hardness as I work on different shading and things like that. Now up here we have opacity. Opacity is how transparent something is so or how opaque. So if we're at 100% opacity it is completely hard and we can see it and around 50% you can see it's somewhat see-through and if I do another line you can see that it's somewhat see-through and then obviously one percent you're gonna barely see at all and you can start to see it there and again this will come in handy when you're working on shading and getting in some nice colors now right here there's these little buttons up here and over here our pressure sensitivity. So if you do use a Wacom tablet like I am, what you can do is put that opacity at 100 and click on this pressure sensitivity. So essentially the harder and lighter I push will be the harder and lighter my opacity goes. So I'm pushing hard, pushing light, pushing hard. So that is how to do that. Now I also have pressure sensitivity on for my size. So if I didn't have that on for size, it would stay the same size and we're just working with opacity. If I take that off and I put over here this pressure sensitivity on, this is just for my size. So the harder I push, the thicker the line and the softer the thinner. I do always leave that on because this is very similar to how a real pencil works. So I won't use the opacity one uh, personally, but I do use the pressure sensitivity for size. Now over here, I've made a mess on this canvas, so I'm just going to click this plus button down here, and that's going to add a new layer. And this over here are these eyes show if you're going to show the layer. So I'm going to turn off that back layer, I'm gonna grab white, I'm gonna go over here and grab my fill brush, or I can press G for the keyboard shortcut, fill up that canvas, and now I have a new clean canvas for you. So now once I've chosen all of this, oh, we have more stuff to talk about. So we are going to skip over the flow for now, but that's essentially how much something comes out of the brush. It's a little hard to explain, so I'm going to skip it for now. And then the smoothing, um, I also really like to use. So this helps you out if you have a little bit of a shaky hand. So if I have no smoothing on, this is exactly what my hand is doing. Now if I put on a little bit of smoothing, 
and I shake my hand, it sort of helps smooth that line out and you can see it's a little bit smoother than that and then really smooth I'm shaking my hand right now and there's not much movement in it between those two lines and then it's nice and smooth again here I'll do a shaky okay <laughs> so these all three lines I was shaking my hand the same so if you do have some handshake this is really nice and it is almost like your pencil's being pulled by a string, so it is a little bit delayed behind you, but that helps you really see where you're going. And I like it when I'm doing a lot of like detail work because I can get a lot closer in there. So that is it for brushes in Photoshop. Uh, play around with it and have a lot of fun choosing different types of brushes they get so crazy and they all have different abilities so it is a lot of fun to start playing with them and seeing which one you like for your book or your illustration or your style so have fun with that and then the next time we'll get more into layers and drawing and what all of these other tools will do so i hope this has been a fun introduction and we will continue on with the lessons next time go over and check out bethanystall.com slash classes here is my beautiful creation of all the information I have provided so far organized into different sections so you can follow along or if you're looking for help in one specific area, you can access all the resources I have built so far on each area and I am building up my resources every week for you guys so I am trying to build a really helpful helping hand for all of you. A lot of it is free and some of it is exclusive for my self-pub Patreon members which is the best way to get in contact with with me if you have any additional questions or need additional help. So if you are really trying to get into contact with me, Patreon would be the best way. Good luck and happy publishing.